It's over here. Come on, come see. Check it out, cat. We got a kapooper. Oh, neat. It has RAM. There's a hard drive in there. We even have a printer so my dad can print resumes and workers' compensation applications. Whatever those are. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. What games do you have? Oh, um, well, it came with this game. It's called Nibbles. You're a snake and you gotta go around and eat the numbers and... Wait, is your screen even a color screen? Uh, no. No, it, it's not color. <laughs> what kind of stupid games can you even play without color? Uh, not... There's there's not a lot of games you could play without color. Do you have any games we could play together? Um, no. Should we just go to my house and play Nintendo? Yeah. Yeah, we, we should probably do that. Race you there, dweeb. <sighs> hey there, how you doing? I'm Tech Dweeb, welcome. Thanks for clicking on the video today. A little bird told me that you're interested in DOS emulation on your retro handhelds. It also told me that I'm smart and cool and attractive and that every girl wants to date me, including like famous girls and models and stuff. It's a, it's a smart bird. DOS emulation on handhelds seems like a complicated thing, right? <laughs> I mean, for most emulating, you just download a ROM or two or 845, plop them onto your device, fire them up, and you're off to the races. But DOS isn't so straightforward. DOS games aren't just one ROM file, they are programs with many files. Sometimes you need to run specific EXE files, sometimes you need to run a setup file, there are sometimes disk images that you need to mount, and then there's the controls. These games were run on computers with entire keyboards and mouses at their disposal. Whereas by retro handhelds only have D-pads, maybe some have sticks, a few buttons, and yeah, no, no keyboard on there that I can see. And if all that makes it so that you don't even want to try DOS emulation, then I don't blame you. <laughs> because until now, you didn't have a video by TechDweeb showing you everything that you need to know about playing DOS games on your retro handheld gizmo of choice, explaining how to add the games, how to run the games, how to set them up, how to deal with the controls, how to get the best performance, and how to impress the cute cashier lady at the bulk food store with your complete Commander Keen collection. But why would you want to emulate DOS games, you ask? Well, obviously because DOS games are a piece of gaming history and are genuinely the funnest and most graphically impressive retro games that you can play. Even though they are often ignored by lots of retro gamers because they're a bit more complicated to get running. But they are worth the extra trouble. If you like retro games, of course. There are scads of games released for DOS that were way too advanced for anything a console could handle. So the only way to play these amazing retro games properly is to learn how to do a little bit of DOS emulation. And you could do it on your retro handhelds. And today, I'm going to show you how. Check it out, Hermione. When mom went to visit Uncle Mac, he gave her a big box of floppy disk games for DOS because he knows I love poopers. Meow. Holy jeez, I'm going to have so much fun. Oh, okay. Well, well, let's try this one. Aw, oh, man. Bummer. Oh. Um. Huh. Look, here's one that works. I mean, I mean, it's, it sort of works. Meow. And now we come to the thing, the reason for this video, playing DOS games on your retro thingamajig of choice. This is specifically about running DOS games on Linux-based handhelds. I've already made a video about how to run them on Android, and I have a whole freaking series of videos about how to run them on PC with my custom DOS box build called Dweeb DOS. I'll link to those videos below if you're interested in doing any of that stuff. But today we're going to be running DOS games on these retro emulation thingamabobs. There are some differences between them, the different firmware, and front ends sometimes have quirks to getting the games to run, but the principle is the same across all these things. So whether you're using an RK3566 device like the RG353V running Jellos, or if you have a Pow Kitty V10 running ArcOS, or if you have any of the 47 Amberlick devices from their XX line, this exact method that I'm going to show you should work with all of them. Even if like the folder names might be slightly different or the settings menu might have different things in slightly different spots. So pay attention to the principles and you can apply these ideas to any of these. Today I'm going to be showing you all this stuff on the RG35XXSP, which I call the flip zizzle. 
This is currently one of my main handhelds. It's, it might be my new main device. It, it's definitely the one I play the most. I love it. Uh, check out my review if you want to know more about it. I got this from Lid NXT. They sent this to me to review and I've been loving it to bits. I'll include a link to this in the doodad below if you want to pick one up. I am using the newly custom firmware to show this to you today, but everything that I'm showing you will totally work on the stock firmware. So you don't need to mod it in any way. You can just add some DOS games and start playing them the way I'm going to show you. This also works on MuOS the same way, by the way. So first things first, you'll need some games. There are lots of ways to get DOS games. Lots of ways to get legal free games. After a few minutes on Google, hey, look at that. We have some DOS games to play on a retro handheld. Not bad. So uh, let's uh, talk about the files. Usually when you get a DOS game, it comes in a zip. You can copy this directly over to your device and then launch it like a ROM, but there are some awkward nuances to that. You might have to rebind the controls to interact with this intro menu. You might need to switch back and forth between control schemes once you do that, if there are automatic controls for your game, and then you'll have issues with save states. It's fine if you know what you're doing, but I'm going to show you the easy way the dweeb way, which is the best way. What you want to do is unzip each of these games into the DOS ROM folder on your device. Then you're going to add .pc to the folder name. So Doom will become Doom.pc. Now uh, in here, there's a lot of files, a lot of exe files, and you don't want to have to select between these on your emulation thingamabob. So what we're going to do is create a bat file to launch the specific exe that we, we want to launch every time we run Doom. So to do this, open Notepad on your computer and then in here you're going to type the name of the exe file that you're going to run. You just look through the folder and find the exe name of your game. Usually it's the same as the folder name. Just use your common sense here. You can always change this later if it doesn't work. And now we need to save this file in the folder for our game, but it's, it's not going to be a text file. We need to change the file type to all files and then make sure the name is the same name as the folder name. So doom, but with dot bat at the end. Basically, we're making a bat file to run the exe. If I copy this over to my retro handheld, I can see that Doom is now listed in my DOS games and I can load it up and boom, I'm taken right into the game. And like I said, different firmwares might handle this stuff a bit differently, but what I showed you should work no matter what the firmware. And uh, I want to quickly mention that some games need installers or some sort of setup. The way you handle this is to do everything we did, but don't bother making a bat file yet. When you start the game, you'll be greeted by this menu where you can choose the exe file for your game. And then you can select the installer and you go through the install stuff. After you run the installer, you should have all the files in your game directory. And then you can create the bad file the way I showed you before. And if you have issues with the controls while doing this, while uh, interacting with the installer, I'll, I'll tell you how to deal with control stuff in a minute. Also, I need to mention that some games need you to mount an image in order to run. That's because they came on a disc or CD and uh, you needed to have the disc in the drive when you ran the game. I explain in depth how to do that in this video, so I definitely recommend watching that. But the short version is that you need to add a mount command to your bat file to mount the image and then launch the game. For example, here is my bat file for Albion. This is the syntax for the image mount command, and this is the exe for the game. But definitely watch my other video because there are some other things that you might want to know about that if you run into problems. And that's it. That's the basics of how to get the games working. And next I'll explain how to set up any controls or whatever. But first let's check in with Little Dweeb and see how he's doing. I wish I had a color monitor. I could play so many color computer games if I did. Wait a second, what's this button on the side? I never noticed that before. What? That button makes the monitor a color monitor. I had a color monitor this whole time and I never do. This is amazing. Now I can play all the games from that box of games that Uncle Matt gave me. And when Kat comes over, she'll see that I have a color monitor and she'll stop making fun of me and I'll be so happy. This is the best day ever. Ever, ever, ever. Wait, what? That was just a dream? Hmm, I wonder. Uh, no, no, uh, no color monitor button. Meow. Yeah, yeah, that's depressing. 
And now we need to talk about the controls. Here's the thing about DOSBox in RetroArch. Tons of games actually have pre-made control schemes. The problem is that oftentimes the pre-made control schemes are made with dual thumbstick controllers in mind. This is great if you have a dual thumbstick device like the Zaz Bizzle or the Zaz Biggle, but not ideal if you don't have a thumbstick like me. Here I'm by Flip Zizzle. So for example, in Doom, I can move the D-pad around as if it's the left stick, but I don't have the right stick to turn or aim. And some games don't have any controls set at all, especially um, the more obscure DOS games. So you'll need to know how to set the controls yourself. It's easy to do though. So just open up your RetroArch quick menu and then go down to controls and go to port one controls. And in here you can bind the controls to be wh whatever you want. So for a game like Doom, I need to rebind the D-pad controls to be what I want. And then I can go back and test them out. And if, uh, if I set them up right, I can just play the game. And if you get the controls just the way you like them, you can go back to the controls menu in the quick menu and select save game remap and then it'll be uh, applied every time you play this game. Sometimes when you go to edit the controls, you'll see that there aren't any game commands listed. It'll just be the keyboard keys. Or sometimes you might prefer to rebind the keys via the keyboard keys yourself. So uh, what you want to do there is just change the device type to generic keyboard. And then you can set the controls exactly the way you want. And again, go to save game remap if you want to have these controls to be the ones used every time that you start the game. By the way, if you want to see the controls for a game, Game, just Google the name of the game with the words DOS and controls and you'll find like JPEGs or wiki articles that will tell you all the controls for these older games in, in case there's something specific that you want to bind. And if you ever want to bring up the on-screen keyboard to enter in some text or press a specific button for some reason, that's built into DOSBox. However, annoyingly, it's bound to the L3 button by default, here in Newly at least, which we don't have on the flip zizzle. So you can bind the on-screen keyboard command to any button you want the same way that you bind any other key. I usually set that as the L2 button. Another thing that you might want to do is set up a mouse, which you can also bind to a D-pad for mouse games. For example, I can start up Heroes of Might and Magic 2, but uh, when I get to the menu, I can see the mouse isn't working because it's defaulted to keyboard controls. So we can go into the port one controls, change the device type to mouse with left analog. And then since I'm on newly, I can swap the control scheme with the menu button and the select button to change the D-pad into an analog stick input, or you can rebind the D-pad if you uh, want to use that instead. And then I can can use this to control my mouse cursor. And Newly has a cool feature where you can swap back and forth between analog stick and D-pad controls. So uh, in this game, for instance, it supports both keyboard and mouse controls. And then uh, don't forget to save the game remap once you get the controls the way you like them. And one thing about the mouse input, if you find it's too sensitive, like if the mouse cursor is just moving too fast, you can change that in the uh, quick menu and go down to core options, input, and then change the mouse sensitivity to whatever you like. I find 50% is a good baseline. That's usually what I set it to. And you can go back to the quick menu and go down to the overrides and then select save core overrides if you want this to be the sensitivity for all games launched with this core. That's what I do. Or you can just apply it to this one game by selecting save game overrides. And real quick, I'll touch on the performance. There, there's not much to talk about here because for the most part, the DOS box performance here is set for you. It's automatically configured to run at the best CPU settings with the the right clock cycles and all that stuff, all the best graphics adapter settings. However, if you want to tinker, you can change any of that stuff in the core options from the quick menu. If your favorite game doesn't run great, you can try changing stuff in here. It's worth trying some things out to see if it makes a difference. Duke Nukem 3D, for example, isn't running great. I can't get it playable. I, I can get it running slightly better by tweaking uh, some of the CPU performance settings, but still, I can't get it running perfect like that. However, Duke 3D does have a port that you can get running on this device and it works perfectly there. I'm thinking of doing a PC ports video at some point soon, so get subscribed if you don't want to miss that. How much do we need to win again, Dad? Uh, I don't know. Let's say a million bucks. Okay, so if I could win a million bucks on a scratch ticket, I could have a color monitor? Uh, yeah. Yeah, sure. Hey, you scratch off a jackpot and I'll get you a color monitor. Huh? Oh. Oh my gosh, I got it. I got three the match. What? Oh, oh, that's good. You got three bells. That's like a hundred bucks. Is a hundred more or less than a million? <laughs> Way less than a million. And how much is a color monitor? Uh, I don't know. 
couple hundred bucks, maybe. So can we get one? No, dweeb. A million bucks was the deal. Good job with the scratching, though. We can get you something in the dollar store as a special treat. How about that? Okay, do they have color monitors at the dollar store? <laughs> no, dweeb. Don't be stupid. Ha. <laughs> yeah. I had big plans for this video. I wanted to touch on which games play the best on handhelds and maybe show you some of my favorite DOS games. But I realize now that this video is uh, going to be way too long if I did that, especially because I've been wasting your time playing with homemade paper dolls. So I'll have to do a separate video for that. I just did a best retro games for handheld video. So I think one focus specifically on DOS games that run well on retro handhelds would be like a fun partner to that. I'd, I'd be curious to know, do you, do you think that would be a good video? Uh, let me know if you want me to make that in the comments below. And let me know if you have any questions or whatever. There's a lot to cover and I hope I did a good enough job, but if there's anything that I missed or anything still unclear, just let me know and I'll cover it in a future video. How does that sound? It sounds good. And th that's it. Uh, that's all I got for you today. How to get your DOS games running on your retro thingamajig of choice. How to set up the controls. How to play them. If you need a retro thingamajig, a flip zizzle like this or any of the other bazillion handhelds that I've reviewed, I recommend getting them from Lit NXT. And there's a link to this in the doodad below. There's lots of handheld reviews on my channel. Uh, you can check out my other DOS videos if you're into that. There's no shortage of tech tweet videos to watch after this one. So I'll let you go do that. I'm Tech Dweeb, thanks for watching. Bye bye. Did you get your color monitor yet? Uh, no, no, not yet. Oh, well, don't worry. You'll get one someday. Thanks, Cat. That makes me feel a lot better. You're a really good friend, you know that? Shut up, dweeb. Yeah, okay.